Hey everyone, we're trying a new approach for discussing world building stuff. So the issue is, is that like I do a world building video and I make a few points and then down in, in, in the comments, everyone lists, you know, a whole heap of good points. And I figure like, why not just have these points in, in the video? So I invited a nice guy from the discord. It's a ghost. Yo. Yeah. And uh, today we're going to discuss zombies. So um, what I'll do is I'll begin by just listing off what I think the best things about a zombie are. And mm -hmm. then it's a ghost will provide his opinion. And then I guess we can just banter a bit and discuss things. So uh, my first point regarding the main strengths of a zombie is disease. I think, yeah. I think that zombies have a unique advantage over many other types of undead things like skeletons and ghosts and whatnot, because, you know, a single scratch from a zombie should be a fairly dangerous affair. Like if mm. you go up to a zombie and you're like swinging a sword at it, even if you kill it, you could walk away diseased and die of that later. In a fantasy yeah. setting, I guess it's less of a problem with clerics and shit like that. Um, surely like this would depend largely on the world that this is in because say for example um with skyrim and elder scrolls i mean especially skyrim if you get scratched you can easily go to a shrine or you can go to a priest there and you can get it you can get the infection removed yeah but if it's something like uh westeros in game of thrones where magic isn't so viable it's oh yeah you've just been bitten by a zombie try milk of the poppy <laughs> I think in Skyrim you can just eat Hagrave and feathers or something, right? Or like a horse. Uh, something like that. Yeah. Yeah, that's a good point. It really depends on the setting. Mm. In real life, it'd be devastating. It'd be like a oh, super yeah. weapon. Alright, so my next point is smell. So, like, if you've ever been around yes. a rotten corpse, holy shit, it smells terrible. Like, See, I wrote, I wrote that down as a talking point. Let me find it. Um... Because I wrote down a few talking points, and 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 when it, the first one I did was smell, and you got rotting flesh, and you got the ammonia. Because when it comes to the actual like, um, let's say that the brain's like that, the head is bust open, the the brain will smell of ammonia. It's got like this horrible smell to it. God damn, yeah. So, so let's 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 say that you that you you know you know you you and your boys, your your rotting zombie boys, they're gonna crack open a cold one with the boys. You're going along, they're gonna smell you before you even get there. You're gonna you're gonna have people going, bloody hell is that? Yeah. And imagine if you're like trying to raid a dungeon, like Oblivion style. Yeah. The whole place would just be reeking. Mm. I don't think that um, you could really engage zombies in melee combat for that reason alone. The smell would just be terrible. You'd be gagging. Especially in close in close quarters where there's no ventilation. Yeah. Because could could that knock you out? Like could that? I guess it could. I mean. You'd probably be choking on the horrid smell. Like I've never gone and gotten a good lungful of rotten corpse smell, but mm. I guess it's probably going to be completely awful. I mean, yeah. Going along with that, you know, when it comes to the typical sort of uh, thing where you've got like a necromancer in his crypt and he's chilling out, you know, he's 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 got cold play on in the background. He's he's doing the he's doing the thing with 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 a corpse in front of him. Yeah. With surely because these places will have such low ventilation, do you reckon it would be a very viable thing to once the zombie's done, immediately send it outside? I think so. Yeah. Especially and going alongside and going alongside that, surely these people would have absolutely no sense of smell whatsoever. Their sense of smell would be dead. Yeah. I once uh, thought maybe they could wear some kind of mask, like um, the plague doctor's head, with like nice herbs and stuff on the. Oh yeah, yeah. Maybe that would help. You definitely want some kind of mask. Mm. Probably long gloves as well, because of the disease problem. Yeah. But if you're a lich, I mean, that doesn't matter. No. The no, if, if, if you're a lich, it's, it's, no, it's, it's completely different. Yeah. The next fact is, like, imagine all the wildlife that would be attracted to zombies. There'd be, like, a cloud of flies around the zombies. Yeah, yeah. You've got in, you've got um, carrion insects uh, eating away the flesh. You've got like maggots. You've got flies. It's it's it'll be a, it'll be a horrible thing. And when it comes to that as well, uh, these insects will be spreading diseases. Yeah. Like 
you can you like you can have flies buzzing around and they can they can be distracting you it, they can land on you they can have like mosquitoes you can have all sorts yeah and all it takes all it takes is a couple bites all it takes is a, is just one little accident and or just one little incident one little thing and you're buggered yeah and imagine if you're a guy with a sword and you're trying to hack the zombie and there's like a cloud of flies buzzing around in your face. It's going to be mm. very distracting at the least. There's also the morale, uh, like the, when it, especially when it comes to undead, there is always the morale aspect, the mental, psychological aspect, because you're not fighting somebody who's trying to defend their country. They're not. You're not fighting somebody that's got their own morals and their own life and all of that. You're fighting this rotting undead carcass that smells horrible. You're, watch, you're watching the flesh just decaying on it yeah. you've got you've got insects like eating away at it and that and it's if, if you're not sort of prepared for it it can be very long-term psychologically yeah. taxing and the other aspect is what if you see a dead family member attacking you as a zombie yeah yeah exactly uh, that's um in in with warcraft that's i think one of the reasons as to why the scourge are so um effective because it's the one of the things that they do and they do make a point of this once or twice uh, that you can see. Uh, um, one of them is the Death Knight starting zone, and you'll um, on that you'll be killing your old uh, somebody that you knew in life. And when it comes to and they will do that with Death Knights is they will have them, they'll have like people that have uh, that are of importance to the enemy, bring them back, make them super strong, and then send them to fight the enemy because the enemy can't. If if they do kill them, it's going to be really difficult. Yeah. All right, so um, my next point about zombies is a resistance to conventional weaponry. And what I mean is, like, if you slash someone with a sword, right, mm. one of the main problems is, like, they're going to bleed out, or if you impale them with a sword, you're going to hit, like, a vital organ. But it depends on it depends on how the... It, when, if, if they're being slashed, you've got the wounds to contend with, but you've also got the infection as well. And when it comes to, when it comes to stabbing, depending on the kind of weapon you could use, like say say bayonets for example, um, on on guns, yeah, it's I might be incorrect in this, but if I remember correctly, they are designed to be really difficult to fix, and you have some weapons that are designed to be really really hard to you know to to, to fix. So having that, yeah. You don't have to worry about any of that with a zombie. And uh, usually you have to behead them as well to kill them in most mm. um, fantasies. And, like, I don't think that's an easy thing to do either if you're, like, trying to behead a zombie and it's attacking you with a cloud of flies and you're choking on the mm. awful smell. Um, see, I, I agree. Yeah, I agree with that. It's going on to that with a more realistic sort of look. You know how in like Hollywood and in typical fantasy and stuff, beheading people is quite easy. It's easily done. Yeah. That's in in real life. That's not. I mean, depending on the circumstances, that's not the case. Yeah. It's if true. it's, I mean, if it, the, the 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 decaying flesh might make it easier, but it also might have the opposite effect. I think it would not be easy to behead a zombie because you know you're trying to cut through bone and flesh, and even if the flesh is rotten. It's still mm. something to get through. It can be quite tough. Yeah. And oh, I'll, I'll leave this for later, but we're not even counting armor into the factor, but armor comes yeah. later. Um, so... And to, to, go on, to go on top of that, they don't even need metal armor. I mean, um, just, having, just having a neck guard yeah. or just having something there would, would be quite effective. Yeah, because they're not—they're not just going to stand there and let you do it. They are going to be constantly moving, and That's they're right. not going to be. Depending on the zombie, they're not even going to be stood upright, which makes it even more difficult because you've yeah. got to adjust for the to to the angle. Yeah. And if there's multiple of them, then. And there's some other weird things like there's headless zombies in some fantasies, like in Oblivion, for example. And mm. I don't know how they'd work, but I guess you just have to hack them and dismember them completely. What does what does a Dullahan uh, class as? What sorry? Uh, it's a uh, Dullahan. It's um, it's like a it's an undead that the head is able to come off. Like it's the head is decapitated and they oh. kind of like hold it. Like you know you know um, the headless horseman, right? Yeah, kind of like in Harry Potter, that dude with the head hanging off, whatever the ghost. Yeah, 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 kind of. And so they're able to so they're able to hold it and they're able to pull it on, but it's it's the head doesn't really stick. It's you see you see it a lot in anime. Yeah, I guess it's a completely different kind of zombie. 
Mm. So yeah, basically, my whole point there is just that like you can't. It's not a good idea to be fighting zombies with normal weaponry, for the for the reasons mentioned. Yep. Another thing is, zombies are resistant to conventional tactics. Like you can't really fight a zombie like you can fight a living creature. They've got no preservation instincts. They don't feel pain and they don't have fear. For example, like imagine a Greek phalanx, right? A line of yep. dudes with spears and shields are trying to stab each other. Both mm. sides are trying to avoid being killed, so they kind of remain at spear distance and they're trying to see openings to stab in there. But a zombie doesn't give a shit about that. A zombie will just run right up and like impale itself on the pike. It doesn't matter. You know. Um, am I am I okay to quickly sort of like because we know it's a bit. Oh yeah, sure. All right, just I'm going. So I'm going to do my mic up so you can't hear it. Oh, that's better. <laughs> right. <laughs> um, going on to that with the lack of self-preservation. Uh, when it comes when it comes to combat, when it comes to war, and when it comes to fighting, um, depending on how the battle goes, you will have people that will like. If 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 an army is is rogered utterly, they they can they can flee, they can retreat, they can go, they can fight another day. Zombies do not have that self-preservation. They will just keep going and going until they can't anymore. Yeah. And that makes them um, a very intimidating foe to go against, but it also makes them very good to go against in a way. Because if you've got them, because of how they lack intelligence, well, depending on depending on the world and depending on the fancy, because they typically lack intelligence and they lack self and they lack the self preservation instinct, you could use that to to your advantage and get rid of a lot of them um, by luring them in, into an area that does allow for it. Otherwise. They, they, because they won't. They will just keep coming, and they won't stop. Um, they could, they could very easily, depending on what they have and depending on how they are, they could very easily route the living enemies that they're going up against. Who would flee? Who would leave? And and the anarchy of it would probably cause more harm t to themselves than the zombies, depending on the yep. situation. I totally agree. Another thing is like if you're a line of soldiers, right, in a formation. And yep. you've got zombies like charging at you, impaling themselves on your spear and whatever. Well, if they impale themselves onto your spear, you can't really use the spear anymore. So you've mm. got to get your sword out or whatever, your backup weapon. Plus, plus there's also the weight of it. Yeah. And like, if you've got a zombie that's like trying to death hug you kind of thing and it's biting you and whatever, how are you going to be swinging your sword and trying to decapitate it? It's not really going to work. Mm. So yeah, I guess like, to summarize, the most powerful thing about the zombie is that it's like a putrid, rotting corpse with no fear. Um, it's just like a living weapon, pretty much. Or unliving yeah. weapon. Um, um, so... uh, sorry, Kyra. Oh yeah, so um, I'm going to move on to my next point, unless you have something else to add. Um, I was, I was going to say that when it comes to the whole thing of, of the zombie, when it comes to the rotting aspect of it, Surely, in some aspects, that would be um, easily that would be a negative because how are we sort of looking at them in terms of the rotting? Because when it when it comes to the legs being so rotted that they can't support themselves, when it comes to the arms being so um, decayed that they can't that they can only swing them as clubs, or say for example, like the eyes are gone, would they still be able to see from the empty sockets or? Yeah. Uh, what about the jaw? So if if the jaw is like removed, so I think what the Walking Dead kind of covers this a bit. They can't do a lot. Yeah, yeah. It's kind of like I think zombies are very much like um, uh, consumable for like a specific short period to use, and then uh, an, exp an expendable resource. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, of no consequence. Yeah, yeah. And of course, like they're not a long term thing. You'd probably need skeletons for that to guard your dungeon or whatever. Mm. But for like battlefield stuff, they seem really good. See the way the way I imagined it would be um, is you you'd have like an acromancer with um, his his top lads. So you're gonna have one that spent a lot of time and effort into possibly a small to medium sized force, and this can take weeks, months, even years of preparation, work, and effort. And with that kind of time investment, you do not want to have all of them getting uh, ruined in a single skirmish. Yep. So what I can easily imagine being done is, and with how zombies are, is graveyards being sacked and raided and uh, corpses taken and raised and all of that. 
they can form a very effective meat wall or a shield wall, like with their own bodies. Yeah. Because because it doesn't matter it doesn't matter if they're all dead by the end. You can just you can just use you can either use the broken corpses still and bring them back up. Though they might not be as effective, but they're still good meat shields. Yeah. Or you can use the or you can use the people that have died in the battle. So there is no end to them, especially in a medieval in a medieval world where the death rate is quite high. Yep, totally true. I agree. Um, so my next point is like, how do you fight against a zombie? And I thought up some good ways and some bad ways. So my first point on that is, I think arrows and bows are no good because you're just going to make right. a pin cushion out of the zombie, and like maybe it's harder to kill now because you've turned it into a porcupine. Yeah. Um, um, going going on to that real quick, flaming arrows won't work either, realistically, because yeah. with with the speed that they're going, the flame would either be knocked out after it's been fired, or it won't do a lot to the zombie. Like if if it, the fire is still there when the arrow pierces it, it'll just cauterize the wound or cause a little cooking effect to go off. It won't set it on fire. It won't just the fire won't spread instantaneously and cause the zombie to explode and right. Like, if I stab a steak with, like, a flaming whatever, the steak's not going to catch on fire. Mm. It's like, the the meat is mostly water, right? Yeah, so, yeah. Like, you can set something on fire at a certain point because the fat is flammable, but for mm. that, you need a lot of heat. You need, like, a fireball or something. And going along with that, corpses will naturally um, emit a lot of gas. Like, they can bloat up because of, because of gas uh, buildup. So there is that aspect as well, but if that is such an issue, surely it would be very common for holes to be made for that gas to be released. Yeah, like like if you have like if you have a few a few holes in the stomach area to deflate it, then the smell will get worse, but the zombie will otherwise be unaffected. Yep, and I guess that comes into like exploding zombies. You can weaponize those gases. Yeah, yeah. Explosives is my next point. I think explosives are a damn good way to kill them. Absolutely. Like a minefield or something would be perfect. Mm. And because of how mindless they are, they would easily just walk into... I mean, seeing one of them explode would do nothing to stop the others. They would just keep going. So yep. having a minefield, having one zombie just walking into a mine and exploding, not only does it uh, destroy the zombie and anyone's nearby... But, it, but the noise and the blast would alert uh, people to it and allow them to prepare. Yeah. Next thing is cannons. I think chain shot would be very effective, like they used against horses, the two balls of a chain between, because it basically yeah. dismembers whatever it hits. Yeah, yeah. Um, I also think things like trenches with spikes in them, pitfall traps, that kind of thing would be effective, at least to mm -hmm. delay them. I mean... At a certain point, the trench just fills up with zombies, and the, the ones remaining just walk over the top. But it kind of depends on how many zombies there are. Would electrified water work? Hmm. I because because I know I know that is used in, that has been used in real life uh, to some degree in warfare. Um, I've I've got a book. I mean, if you want like noise, go to the uh, find the specific page because I think it was less than fifty pages in. Uh, where it is um, where it was mentioned one yeah where it was mentioned where they they were electro um, they were having the enemy go through this horrible swamp and go through the, all this water but they would electrify the moment that the enemy would get close and it would kill all of them they would wow. remove the bodies and rinse and repeat I mean it's kind of hard to know if electricity would kill a zombie um I don't know how it kills a human, actually. Like, does it cook it? Um, I think it's a mix, isn't it? Like, it, it goes, doesn't it go through the heart and cause True. damage yeah. and damage there? I mean, with, it, with a zombie, like, especially with how the human body works, the human body uh, functions on electricity to some degree. Like, you've got electrical synapses in the brain, you've got the heart, which is its, you know. Yeah. Um, so having that, I can imagine that electricity would kind of stun a zombie. Like, it would either, maybe it would cause the decaying muscles to lock up or maybe it could cause them to explode or maybe it could cause them to just completely fail altogether or to be worse than they are yeah i think in or... a setting sorry um uh, it's, it's, no that's right Karen. 
I think in a setting where the zombie sort of relies on the sort of mostly intact corpse to function like, you know, the typical zombie movies, I think yeah, there yeah. it would work really well because it would just ruin the, the, the mechanics, basically. Mm. Against the fantasy zombie, I'm not so sure. I don't know. Because... I know, I know that when it comes to water, electricity does not go through pure water. It goes through impurities in the water, and that's it. And it kind of like makes like a bridge from that and, and branches out from there. And with a zombie, there is there is a lot of impurities. <laughs> yeah, for sure. Yeah, I think um, it's worth to try. Mm. Unless, unless we just take like gaming logic, so we just throw a zombie in, into a bit of electrified water, and then it just inst instantly dies. Yeah. <laughs> All right, so my last point is like, what are the best uses for zombies? And I think we kind of covered that a bit, but basically does yep. any kind of frontline work. They're perfect for that. Yep. Um, you can't use them in a lair really, unless you're a lich. But even then, like if you've got a lair filled with explosive gases, that's not good for even a lich because an adventurer can just throw a torch in there and blow the whole thing mm. up. Going, going along top of that, <laughs> going along top of that, um... Zombies won't really be good for indoor activity, um, depend depending on the state of decay the corpse is in, because it's going to be falling apart. You don't want to walk into your living room to find that, uh, you know, um, John's organs are just sort of smeared all over the floor, stepped in, and it's all up the walls, and it's dripping from the ceiling, and, you know... Like, you, you, don't, you, don't, you don't want to just, like, open up your cutlery drawer and say, oh no, there's a little bit of brain in there. Huh. <laughs> Yeah, plus it like ruin the lich's tomes and shit. I don't think a lich would want them in, in his lair. Yeah, skeletons, skeletons definitely because skeletons you can sort of like you can clean them somewhat, not easily because the bones can be awkward, but you can easily kind of like just rin uh, like clean them ish. Like you can you can spray water on them, you can bleach them a bit, you can actually have them clean themselves or clean each other so that yeah. you're not doing it. Yeah. But with a, with a zombie, it's I think that. With how they are, like they, they can, like they are quite physically um, strong. Yeah. Um, and and that's that's another thing as well. Is would would they be would they be as strong as a normal person, or would they be stronger because they don't they don't have uh, what a normal human has to keep them from using all of their muscle strength? I think they would probably be stronger for that reason, unless yeah. you know they're like mechanically damaged from the rotting or whatever. So, so the stronger. So they can be used for really cheap, easy labor. They can haul things. They can move things. They can definitely be used to attack people, but they can also be used for other basic stuff. I mean, you know, um, have you ever played Rimworld? Um, the uh, Rimworld of Magic. Yeah, I have. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, and and you've got the and you and you got the you got the zombies there, and they're not the best when it comes to building stuff or doing stuff, but they are exp they are a cheap expendable. They are a cheap expendable labor, and you you can just keep throwing bodies at something until the problem isn't a problem anymore. Yeah, I think you could use them for like hauling stuff. You couldn't use them for farming because they'd probably taint the food. Mm. Um, well, well, that and they'd also attract so many animals and insects that any agricultural true. work they're doing was would just be wrecked anyway. Yeah, that's a good point. I guess they can lie down and fertilize the soil. That could work. Yeah, just just chilling out. <laughs> yeah. So, um, I my last point on a really good use for zombies and undead in general, really, is I think they're really good for sieges. Because yes, yeah, they don't need any kind of supply lines they can just be awake day and night i think the mm. living are completely screwed actually in a siege situation there was um there was a story that i did quite a while ago it's i didn't i didn't complete it um but it was basically uh during a siege i'm not even sure if i actually still have that on my computer but it was it was during a siege and what it was is um, the people there had basically known that the zombies were coming, like the undead were coming, and they and the castle itself wasn't prepared for zombies, but they made do. And what it was is they realized how screwed they were, so they realized that they had to end the siege as quickly as possible. So the, the most to trick the necromancer into making human error and into making a mistake, who so he sent in all of his zombies in. So the plan with the plan being to have um, re like really big made undead. Uh, going into the moat, destroying it at the base, and breaking in through that way, and the zombies would flood in. Um, and then you'd have ones that would pile up at the sides and would go in through like um, windows and such, or they would just kind of go up off the walls and 
so on and so on. Um, so what they did was they used uh, oil which they set on fire, and when it came to the underground, they already had people there with spears, and they already had um, measures taken against that. Yep. But but that is based but that is based purely on the mistakes uh, of someone that is leading them. If they are like if if there's a bunch of like um, say. Game of Thrones, for example, if they are without, or if they are with good leadership, or if they are even without leadership entirely, it would be a completely different story. Yep, I totally agree. Yeah, and uh, I guess a good topic for the next podcast would be the next step up from zombies, which is basically mummies. You take a zombie in a relatively good condition and you preserve yep. it so that it doesn't rot and it doesn't smell and whatever, and you can have those in your base. And they kind of got everything going for them that the zombie has, except for the disease element, I suppose. Yeah. What would um, would that would would that so her voice break? When it comes when it comes to mummies, though, when it comes like to the the bandages. Well, you don't need to mummify with bandages. That's just one option. You've got like in cold places, you can have an ice mummy. Oh, so this this isn't just like just purely Egyptian mummies. Yeah. Oh, There's okay. also the really ugly, weird Chinese mummy that looks all bloated and completely hideous. And they found that one in some kind of unknown liquid. And that one's right. really quite weird looking. It's got almost uh, transparent skin. It's really gross. Would that would that be embalming? Like, would that be like a, uh, not embalming? Would that be like some kind of uh, preservative that they would use? Yeah, for sure. They don't know which one was used in the Chinese zombie. Mm -hmm. I'll just quickly look up the name of that for anyone that's interested. Um, Chinese uh, mummy. It was like a princess. Ah, Xin Sui. I probably butchered that. X I N space Z H U I. Xin Sui. Yeah. Yeah. She was like some kind of Chinese princess or something, I don't know. But yeah, they they found her in some kind of unknown liquid. And that it was really well preserved. So yeah. You know, we had, a, we, we had a princess like that at one point. I think her name was Diana. Oh, yeah? Yeah. And they preserved her? Uh, no, but she was, very, uh, she was very fond of unknown liquids. <laughs> I think I know what you're talking about, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> right. <laughs> so yeah, um anything else? Uh, I mean I've got a few I've got a few talking points, but I think we've caught most of them. Uh, we've got smell ammonia and rotting flesh, which we've done, insects in the corpse, um the mental health effects, the oh yeah, the zombies naturally becoming skeletons. Yeah. So if you have one that lasts long enough, it would automatically lead to uh, depending on how you look at it, Abe and dead. Um, oh yeah, uh, actually no, that, that that one I can say at the end. Uh, strength, speed, and endurance. Um, I think yeah, we've already we've already covered that. Uh, zombies as meat shields. Oh, what skills would a zombie have? Like, would it retain the knowledge and skill set it had in life? Because you do have some you do have some media that has that. Like there is that one film. Um, where the zombies are sort of semi-intelligent. Is it? Uh, is it called Dead? Re it's the one. It's the one with the big bus. The called Dead Reckoning. I think it is. Yeah. No, that's um, a good it, point. Yeah. Um, if if the zombie is like that, then it can only be better, right? Because now it's got good weapon skills and stuff. It's yeah. Still got all the other advantages a zombie has, but now it's like skilled. Um, there is. Have you ever played Dragon's Dogma: Dark Arisen? I haven't, or just or just Dragon's Dogma. There is uh, you have undead in that, and the way in which one of the mechanics it has uh, to the world to the world is you've got a day and night cycle. So you'll have different enemies at day and night, and when it comes to night, everything is of course pitch black. And all of the all of the zombies and all of the undeads, like you'll have spirits, you'll have liches, everything comes out at night uh, for a small period of time. And so you, when it comes to night, if you're caught out in it, you'll have zombies coming out of the ground and. Like you can hear it, but they will actually speak. Like they, they are very weak, but they are quite tanky early on. And they will have it seems that they have memories from what they were doing in life. So you'll so you'll have like some zombies there groaning, saying things like, What would the wife say? My <laughs> baby I need to close up shops, stuff like that. 
That's also a bit like the Total War Warhammer zombies. That they're kind of intelligent in like the pirate mm. faction. I mean, not the vampire counts. Aren't they? Aren't they intelligent because they've been cursed? Like they've not been killed and brought back. It's the curse yeah. that's on them. Yeah. Yeah. I I read something about it and I didn't go too into detail on it, so I may be speaking bullshit here, but. I think it's something to do with them coming from the sea. They're like yeah. somehow different than the other zombies and they've like retained skills and some degree of intelligence. They can operate their guns and stuff. Well, I know that the vamp I know that the vampires when it comes to war Total War Warhammer 2, I know that the vampires are like that, um are, are how they are because of you got a bunch of lore stuff. And I think isn't it to do with Arcan uh Nagash? Yeah, probably. Yeah. yeah, and then you had necromancy being made, um, and then you had the Tomb Kings doing all of their stuff. Yeah, yeah. Well, I do, I do quite like that though. You have like three different, like wholly unique types of them other than dead. You've, you've got yeah. like your skeleton boys, you've got your vampire boys, and then you got your zombie boys. I love that game, man. It's one of the best games ever. It's so mm. good. I got, I got, I got the Tomb Kings recently, and when everything's on sale, I'm getting everything else. Yeah, good idea. Mm. Oh, one more thing that we didn't really yep. talk about yet. I just remembered it is armored zombies they're like yes a totally whole new level of zombie power because i mean like how are you going to behead the thing if it's like in a suit of armor see i was thinking the other day about it and i was thinking if you have a zombie with gambeson um chain mail and then plate or, or steel or you know like proper like plate metal um armor on top of that the only thing I could think of that would do would that would do do them in anything that would pro uh, probably properly kill them would either be that they are so rotted and decayed that it renders the armor impractical to them. Um, they've had they've been in so many battles that the armor is rent and semi destroyed and it's uh, ill kept, or just plain magic. Yeah, just, just, just. They are that much of a threat. They are that much of a nuisance, or they are that much of an issue that you can't kill them through conventional means. Like you can't kill them on the field. Yeah. Because, like, yeah. Sorry, um, I don't think you could kill them with like swords and stuff. You'd need fireballs. You'd need um, bombs, that kind of thing. Yeah, or maybe even in, like enchanted weaponry. Yeah, enchanted weaponry. Yeah. Another thing about it is, um, you know, like, a human needs to be armoured in a way that it can still kind of, like, breathe or whatever and survive. But Zombies well, don't have that. They don't need that. Yeah, exactly. So you could probably arm them in a different way to make them even more um, tough to kill than a standard human because they don't have those kind of limitations. Mm. And uh, another um, thing. Sorry. Yeah. You can go uh, on. I, was, I forgot what I was going to say now. Oh, okay. <laughs> uh, <laughs> do you know the game Zombie Army Trilogy? No. Basically, it's like a World War II zombie game where you're shooting undead zombie Nazis, basically. And oh, is it? The, yeah, is it like the one where you're in uh, Berlin or yeah. something along those lines? And and you got like all of these whole, uh, like glowing eyed zombies coming at you and yeah, I think that's the one. Yeah. yeah, I've seen a little bit of gameplay of that. I think. Yeah, I just I saw it. I saw it in the thought to myself. Yeah, I that would just no, just no. I'm not no. I'm if I'm if I'm shooting zombies, I'm doing it. I'm doing it with automatic weaponry. I'm not doing it with with World War Two weaponry. <laughs> there there are some automatic weapons. Like you've got like the MP40. I'm pretty sure you've got um, that PP40 SH or whatever that Russian one, with the drum barrel, a drum yeah. magazine. But yeah, um, it's mostly rifles. That's true. But anyway, th about the zombies in that game. They've actually got like armor that's been like so somehow attached to them, and you know like as you shoot them in special spots, the armor can fly off, and then you can kill them. But yeah, I wonder how good that would be, like armor basically attached to the zombie. What if it was like melded onto them, or welded on? I think in the game they're kind of nailed on or stitched on. It's really yeah. weird because they go through this weird factory thing where people go in and then these armored zombies come out. And... It's crazy, crazy how they should do that. <laughs> yeah. I think, I don't know if that would be better than just having them dressed in normal armor, to be honest. Because mm. it's a lot of work to, you know, stitch all that stuff onto them. And... It's a lot of resources as well because that metal could be spent elsewhere. Yeah. 
and you know also considering the fact that zombies are sort of a timed consumable that you know they're going to rot away in a few months or i don't know how would it even months. be practical to do it in the first place yeah exactly yeah I don't know how long it would take a zombie to rot away to the point that it was no longer effective. Um, I was I was having a recent conversation with a friend of mine about that. I think he uh he, and he googled there. I think he said like between uh a couple of weeks to a year or two. It it depends entirely on the conditions the corpse is in. If if it's in like a um, up a, if it's if it is in a country like up in northern Europe, it's going to be a lot colder, so it's going to take longer but if it's in some place like africa or say brazil it's not gonna last long that's true that's actually a really good point to discuss is like how effective a zombie would be depending on environmental conditions and mm. i think for sure that in a hotter climate they'd be less effective because they'd be around for less time see this is why this is why when it comes to quite a bit of fiction you'll have zombies in cold areas like uh, and when it comes to world of warcraft they're up in they're up in north uh, north end where everything's freezing yeah. so they preserves them when in game of thrones they're up in the north past the wall everything's freezing yeah. it, it allows them it allows them to continue to be well it allows them to continue to function despite them being so heavily deteriorated it's also a double-edged sword, though, because, you know, in a cold place, disease is going to be less of a problem because it's cold, and mm. it's like refrigerated meat. It's going to take a lot longer to go off. So, I guess if you really want to abuse the element of disease, you can't have too much cold. Going along, yeah, and um, on top of that as well, when it comes to cold areas... Depending on the people you're going to be up against, there might not be as many of them as in other areas. Because, <laughs> because let's say um, in Game of Thrones, especially, um, they they're attacking they're attacking the Starks' main uh, main place. There's not that many of them there. You've got so many people defending from this castle, but compared to the rest of the world, it's not a lot of people compared to other places, other hosp um, other areas where there's a bigger where there's much bigger populations. You are going to be limited on what you can get anyway in these in these countries. So you, in these places. So when it comes to sort of amassing like this great big undead army in a frozen place, you have to utilize everybody you get because if you mess it up and if you if all of them die, then you've got to either wait for new people, which can take ages, or you go down south or you go wherever to find other people. But then you've got to worry about everything else. Yeah. I guess that if you're running low on people, what about zombie animals? That's a whole yes. other aspect we could discuss. Yes. Um. Ooh, I'm just I'm just thinking of that, and I'm just thinking, how would like uh, birds and stuff? Would they be able to? I think they'd be super effective, like especially for like spreading disease. Like, imagine you kill a flock of birds, right? You got like hundreds yeah. of dead birds. You wait for them to rot a bit. You just fly them into the city, fly them down would the they, city's Would they still be able? Would they still be able to fly though? Well, it depends on how rotted it is, I guess. Because the rot won't just affect the the head, nor the uh, torso, or the feet. It'll affect everything. So that's true. All right. What about this? So you kill a bunch of birds. They're freshly dead, right? They're not composed yeah, yeah. yet. Yeah. Yeah. Then you fly them into the city, make sure they go down like water wells, make sure they get into weird places like maybe inside the grain storage, stuff like that. Mm. This yeah. would poison the town. Because like maybe they find a few birds or whatever, but they probably don't find all the birds. Oh no, it's too late. <laughs> they've, they've infected the water. This entire city must be purged. Yeah. And like, what about other stuff like undead rats? Holy shit. Mm. That's, that's especially, yeah, especially the rats. Yeah. Um, if anything, would you even need undead rats? Because rats themselves, if anything, they're going to be your best friends throughout all of this. True. Yeah, that's a good point. Because because you've got the horrible smell to deal with, but along with that, surely because of the rats, it was a trend. You've got the constant gnawing going off as well, like from rats like going just nibbling on stuff. Yeah, that's a good point. Yeah, you could just so leave the live rats. They work well enough as they are. Hmm. 
What about plus, 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 if, plus if you kill them, you've got a limited supply, and if they're still alive, they can just keep breeding. Yeah, that's true. Uh, what about stuff like bigger animals, like, say, an undead cow, an undead bear, that type of thing? Um, I'm actually not too sure on that. I do, I do have it in one of the in one of my countries, um, wherein a mad king at, at one point ordered that uh, the lower classes were to consume, um, were were to kill all of the livestock, bring raise them, reanimate them, and then the lower classes were to eat the flesh from from these raised um, animals. But I didn't go much beyond that. Yeah. But that is a very interesting question because when it comes when it comes to undead, it's mostly humans, it's mostly people. When it comes to animals, usually it's uh, it's like uh, wolves or dogs or bears or you know like proper dangerous big stuff. Yeah, I think but, um, they could be really good siege weapons. Like let's say you've got a cow, right? Yeah, well, that's just catapult like it. That and also it's like a battering ram, right? Yeah, yeah. Um, I did. Oh, well, actually, I did. I did. Yeah, I did do an undead that had. Um, yeah, yeah. I've been reminded of it now. Okay, so it's an undead, right? It's a well. It's not a zombie, but it's a bunch of. It's like basically a cow or a um, a creature of that caliber of that size, with a ton of bones on the front of it to form like a big battering ram. Wow. And you could and you could send this in to break up front lines, but also to break through um, to as a, as a battering siege weapon as well. Yeah. With how flesh is, you could possibly use that to the same effect. You could just have a whole, a whole ton of corpses just stuck to the same animal at the front. It would be it would be um, front heavy, but it would also be very very effective. That's true. Yeah. As long as you get as long as you get everything right. Yeah, I agree. I think that when it comes to armoring um, zombies, like we just discussed earlier, with you know like bolting whatever onto them, like a metal plate or whatever. I think that would yeah. work better for like the animals because, you know, mm. you can't like put a gambeson on them, but you could like take a cow and like stick a, a big metal plate on its head so that it's a more effective battering ram or whatever. It's you could you could do that you could, you could stitch or you could just stick metal on it. But when it comes to the sides, because of how the uh, how the animal is, it's only got horns. So it would be, you, it it could be quite weak from from the sides. So what you could always have is you could stick like um, metal rods or even wooden rods into the side of it, that would impale people that get too close. Yeah, for sure. You could even you could even angle them to be front facing, so that as it's charging in, it is still doing a lot of damage. This gave me a really good idea, dude. Offensive armor, like oh my. Armor completely covered in spikes and whatever. You got like zombies charging at full sprint, straight into enemy lines. They you know like covered in spikes or whatever. There's... Giving out free hugs to anyone that doesn't have a hug yet. <laughs> yeah. Um... <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh god, it's like it's like that one monster from um, One Punch Man. You got like this great big porcupine with a sign that says free hugs. <laughs> yeah, and you know like. This comes back to disease again. Like, if you've got a spiky zombie, you can, like, rub the, all the spikes down with, you know, like, bits of meat and whatever and make it all really yeah, nasty. Yeah. yeah. You could, like, catapult that spiked zombie into the enemy. You could even, you could even just have it with the zombie, like, just sort of, like, guess a spike, impales his own hand through it, and then just, like, moves the hand off and just keeps doing it. Yeah. Or, 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 or although that might ruin the hand, but you could... It, even then, you could even do it with little bits of flesh from the arm, just like do it, just like do it only with like the just a tiny bits on the very edges. Yeah, it would it would still work. You gave me another idea, by the way. Oh. Um. So let's say a zombie is in like kind of poor condition, like maybe it's missing a hand or a limb or whatever. What if yeah. you like just put like a big ass spike on its wrist? Yeah. I, I um. You don't. You, you don't. You don't even need to do that. I've actually got. Uh. Where is it? Let me find it. Because I've got a type of undead. Um. So here we go. So it's a husk. I'm not going to explain what a husk is. But one of the one of the things I did do is uh, piercing husks, where the hand is completely cut off. So you cut off the hand at the um at the wrist. You and you remove a bit of the flesh from the forearm. And what you do is you file down and you sharpen the bone into being a spear or into being like a sharp pointed object. That is a great idea. 
I love it. So what you could do with that, because with because um, depending on how the zombie is and how they're designed, you don't even need to put armor on them. You could just have them sprint and jump into into the into the front line. Their momentum carrying it, you know, carrying them forward. Even if they are pierced, even if they are jump on spears, they are still going to they're still going to be, still going to be moving, still trying to stab people. Yeah, I really like that idea. It's good. Hmm. Oh yeah, one more thing about the zombie animals is like, it could get really crazy, like you could have zombie elephants, zombie rhinoceros, those things yeah. would completely destroy people. Yeah. Um, it could even, oof. What, what about taxidermy? Hmm. You mean like... Because I did, what was this idea I wrote? Because, um, back in, because back in the olden days, uh, no, it's not that, it's, no, 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 where the bloody hell is it? Here we go. So, his, uh, so historically, right? You know, like the Chimera, yeah. Yeah. And you, you can find this. You can like find images of it. It's a bit freaky. But historically, Chimera have uh, like been bodies that have been stitched together. So, I think in one, and it was I think it was the Romans. I may be incorrect in that. Had a the top the torso of a human uh, stitched on top of a horse to like make it like a, a kind of centaur thing, and they put it in a preservative to kind of like keep it there. Wow. So. So what I was thinking is you could have necromancers that could use this with the bones, but you don't even need the bones. You could easily just like stitch things on top of things, and depending on how uh, all of this could work, you could you could, for example, have a um, an animal like a cow, just stitch a couple spare arms on it, and if the if it's able to control the arms or if the arms are animated by themselves and moving around, just give each of them a sword or just give each of them a pointed object, just let them wave frantically at you in front until they hit something yeah that's a really good idea the only downside i see to it is i think these kinds of things are probably better to do with a mummy because you know you just put all this work into making this awesome zombie and then it just decays away in a, in a few weeks yeah yeah that's a really good point so yeah i think he i think heavily modified zombies and things would probably be better off as mummies so that you don't lose all that hard work but i mean it depends on your manpower right if you've got mm. 200 necromancer apprentices you may as well get them cracking would you even need like the apprentices for it because you could have because of how skeletons are you could always just have them do it true yeah it depends because... on how much fine control you have over your minions it also depends on like the priorities and ingenuity as well, and the resources available. Because if you've got, um, say, for example, a master necromancer who's got all of this stuff from years of success, then this then the only issues would be how to expand, how to get more, how to do better. Because, and uh, compared to compare compare that to somebody that's only just done a couple bodies, they're in the mother's basement, you know, they're chilling out. They're not. They're not going to be. Uh, they're not going to have the same means to do stuff. And also, along with that, and I've said this multiple times, the greatest ally to a necromancer, any necromancer, is time. If you leave them alone for, uh, to their own devices for long enough, they will become a, they will become a bigger issue. I completely. And that, and that is and that is typically why that is typically why um, I believe in fiction you will see necromancers that are, that are either on two ends. They will either be starting off. A uh, new impre uh, they'll have no idea what they're doing, and it'll get them killed. Or you'll have it f uh, at the far end, where you'll have them um, so that they've got a really big army. They've got because like, have you ever noticed that there's only two extremes. There's only ones where they're starting off and they fail because of it, or they um, they get really big, they get really successful, and they've got this really big force that they control. And then from what they what they do on there is up to them, with whether they fail or whether they succeed. Yeah, that's true. And I guess, like, even further than that kind of master necromancy, you've got something like a lich that has literally thousands of years to prepare yeah. stuff. Yeah. That's insane to think about. Um, one thing that you could also have as well, and I honestly can believe this being done in Magic the Gathering, because of, I don't know how the planes work there, I just know that there's, that there's a lot of them, and people can go from uh, between them if they've got the right stuff like they've got if they've got the right ability for it um but what you could have you could have uh what's this bloody name uh <laughs> nicholas nicholas ballin okay. Nic <laughs> <laughs> nickel bolus who the hell is that 
uh, is a big dragon dude, my guy, and he has an entire population of one world uh, giving him bodies every now and again. Oh, neat. Because they worship him as a god. Because he's killed the old gods and he's come in, he's... Um, He's, he's, he's come in, he's got Fortunate Sun Blazing in the background, he's, he's got all of that, he's, t- he's seizing the memes of production, he's taking corpses left, right, and center, and it's he's like slapping a, metal. He's like a necrocomy, basically. Yeah, yeah, he's, 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 everyone is treated equally. Badly. Yeah. Equally well, well, dead, right? Yeah, yeah, and uh, one of the, one of the things uh, one of the things he does is he's basically got like these zombies that are being done, but he has like this substance called I have no clue what it does. I have no clue how strong it is. It just looks cool. Um, it's called Lazo Tap that he's just slapping on every on everyone, hmm. nice. and so you've got all of it. So you got all of that. You got all of that. Um, there are there are issues with it, of course, because you've got like rebellion, you've got uh, other things to take into account. But if you have like if you have a lich that reaches that point where they've got an entire population of an entire of entire civilizations just giving them bodies passively, and they have a whole system, a whole industrial process to go through with that, they can with with how with how these with how these corpses were with how these undead will be preserved, kept, and maintained at that level. After a hundred years, you can, or not even that, after so many years, because people die every day, after so many years, you can just go anywhere you want with them. You don't even need higher thinking or higher intelligence. You don't even need to plan. You can just throw bodies at the problem until the problem isn't a problem anymore. And then, you, and then you've got another world, and then you can just keep it going and going and going. Very true. Yep. Necromancy is really great. Mm. That's why it's one of my favorite you know, or actually my favorite kind of magic and whatever. Mm. But I think um, we should save some of these cool ideas for like the Lich podcast or something. Yes, yes, we should. Um, <laughs> so, <laughs> te- technically, a Lich is just a zombie. It's yeah. just, yeah, it's it's just not. <laughs> yeah. Unless it's like a skeletal Lich, then it's a skeleton. Yeah. Um. T- t- uh, taking us back to zombies because I've I've got us off a little bit off track there. Sorry. Okay. Um, something I've seen a few times in films, and I don't think this is talked about a lot. You have the the Earth philosophy. The what? Sir? I may the I may be saying this entirely wrong, and I may sound like a, an absolute twat <laughs> saying this. Okay, so you know how have you ever had it in zombie films where you'll have the main character uh, saying the Earth, or the message will be the Earth by the end. Uh, I don't think so, but I, I don't know. Like I could know what you're talking about, but at the moment I don't know. I'm trying to remember what film it first. It was like I think it was done by George Romero. It was the one where by the end you've got people beating the crap out of this zombie pinata that's being lynched. <laughs> and I was going to make a joke there, but because uh, I'm not going to actually make that joke now because of uh, how YouTube it is. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's probably a good idea. Yeah, it's it's, it's, it's for the best. <laughs> um, but you've got the main character looking at this, looking at doing all of this, and then saying, "There is, there, there is," because you've because you've got like a zombie sort of meandering about in the shops and wandering aimlessly and without direction. It is kind of reflective of people in some way because you'll have people like doing the daily grind. You'll have people like sort of doing, um, like they'll be doing stuff without any higher thought process to it. And you, and saying that you don't need to have a higher pro, pro, uh, thought process to do a lot of things. Right. Like, oh yeah, you just, you're just going, if going to the shops, going to the shop. You know, you don't really need to think about existential dread while doing it. But they're like um, dreams, basically. Yeah, but uh, the have you ever seen a film Shaun of the Dead? I have. Yeah, it's a funny one. Yeah, you know how at the start you've got it where it's sort of everyone's. It's kind of like a cynical, somewhat comically depressive um, thing that's being shown. You've got people, all you've got like people checking the phones in sync. You've got people just sort of moving about, but they're, they're going. But it seems like they have no drive, no direction. It's like they're already zombies. Yeah. And then, and then by the end, it's the world has recovered, and it's like there's not a lot of difference. Everyone's just kind of getting on with it. That's kind of like a philosophical statement, in a way. Yeah. Yeah. So. It's I've uh, so I've I've got it written down as uh, written down as the Theros philosophy, wherein you wherein you'll have zombies that will basically be us in how they in how they function because it's so similar. 
right yeah because if you if you ever like if you have you ever had it where you go to a shop like a really big shop and you've got people sort of very slowly moving about with trolleys and, and whatnot oh, yeah and imagine like, that but imagine that with zombies and imagine that with the zombies pushing the trolleys what difference is there <laughs> not much oh the only, the, the only difference i the only difference i can think of is someone's missing an arm and mary's lost an eye <laughs> yeah one other thing that we could possibly talk about is like the whole idea of the fungal zombie like you know yes yes yeah um so basically this is almost like disease but even more so because this is definitely a zombie you don't want to be hacking into the sword because mm. mm. you know, you're hacking into you, you don't want to be, you do not want to be close to it exactly yeah and you know the necromancer can just catapult those into a city and it's it's fine they will have a, a whole city converted it's kind of yeah like i could just like, just doing a casual genghis khan yeah <laughs> Exactly. <laughs> um, you got any more points about the fungal zombie? I do. I do. I do. Um, I, I'll probably explain this to you later. But I've got there is one I have in in my world that does have that does utilize that. It's, it's like a fungal kind of creature that does ut that reproduces through. Um, it reproduces normally through. How do I word it? I guess basically just through corpses. It's how it, it, will, it will basically like feed on the nutrients and then it will release more spores and reproduce and so on and so forth um but the when it comes but when it comes to the fungal ones typically they are based and this is the same one i've, I've based mine on and uh, they're based on a type of mushroom called the cordyceps yeah i've heard of um, the ant yeah one. yeah yeah the ant one and it's it's they're not just limited to ants it's the the you'll have specific species that are tiered towards a specific um sp species sp I need a tissue. I need a tissue because my nose. <laughs> it's. I know. I'll, I'll just quick, Bilby. No problem. Alright, I'm back. Welcome back. Oh, sorry about that. My nose. My nose just. It keeps like clogging up a bit. No problem. And then, and then when I'm talking, I can't help but feel I get no more nasally. Yeah. It gets more horrible. <laughs> and it goes. It goes from my fluent, lovely voice into. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. No uh, problem. Yeah. Oh, so yeah, so the cordyceps is um, it's on the Amazon forest floor. It kind of works as a filter, more or less, to make sure that no one species takes precedence over the others or kind of like overtakes the others. And then you have uh, fire ants and Argent uh, Argentinian ants that just you know go worldwide anyway because they did not get nerfed in the recent patch. They just <laughs> keep going. Yeah, yeah, that's a. Crazy on nature. Oh, but yes. Sorry. Um, oh, sorry. Go yeah, yeah, yeah. I was, no, no, sorry, first. I was just gonna say that. Um, I think the whole fungal approach is the best way to kind of make zombies in a scientific way. That's sort of you know scientifically valid with no magic sort of thing. Mm, so so yes. if your if your world building is about like science, then it's actually pretty plausible to have the fungal zombie idea. Mm. Um, what if the fungus, well, if the, well, if the, I mean, especially with it being sci-fi, what if the fungus was intelligent? So it's not this, it's not this thing that's reproducing and that's just using corpses as a means to reproduce. That's just take, that's uh, using stuff, inhaling its spores to spread. What if it's, what if it's something that actually has a thought process behind it? Yeah, it's, it's, so, of course, when it, when it comes to sci-fi, unless we're talking about Warhammer level of super lethality where it can infect everything known to man and beyond and all of that um typically you would find that these that these would only be able, would only be evolved to the species of the planet if humans are there i can imagine that unless it's able to adapt quickly to infect hu humans humans would not have to worry too much unless uh, unless these mushrooms or unless these fun unless these fungus are infecting ape-like creatures that um or a species of mammal that are similar to humans, so therefore humans would be a, would be a good host, a good viable host. But what I could imagine, um, because in real life, it the the spores would be breathed in by insects on the forest floor, like ants on the forest uh, forest floor, for example, and it would send the ants mad. In intelligent uh, in intelligent creatures and in intelligent life, this could be taken one step beyond. You could have it where instead of um, just a random person. Oh, bloody nose! <laughs> uh, instead of a instead of a random person sort of climbing up a tree, and you've got people on the floor going, "Is that Dave? Yeah, is he breathing them spores? Yeah, bloody hell!" <laughs> uh, 
instead of that, instead of that, you've got somebody there with mushrooms growing out his face, going, "I'm going to take the ship back home. We're gonna, we're gonna be safe. Everything's gonna be fine. And I'm gonna show everyone this new stuff I've got." Hmm. Like they rationalize it, they justify it, and because it's an intelligent person doing it, not an not an animal, not an insect, there's an extra element of um, horror to it, or an extra element of lethality to it because it's not. And then that's going back to the hive. It's not the hive recognizing the antidote effect and taking it away. You have all of the dynamics with it. Yeah. If you have if you have a ship of about hundred people going and someone gets infected, would their family or their friends realize the threat and keep them away? That is such a good concept. Holy crap. You've got basically like a fungus that's in a symbiotic relationship with a human at that point. Because mm. like the kind of using each other in a way what would the human be using the fungus for though because uh, to me it would, if it was more parasitic because well, the fungus is using the, the human to reproduce and it's is, using the human's nutrients to, to grow it is for sure parasitic unless there's some kind of advantages conferred by the fungus like what if they get some kind of resistances or i don't know um yeah, I know what you mean. Though I, the only thing I could think of, the only thing I could think of would be um, because the the fungus would be eating away the, at the brain. It would be eating, it, it would be just be eating away at the body. Um, so the only thing I could think of would be a uh, no pain, like no uh, pain tolerance. No, not no. Is it no pain tolerance where you don't feel any pain? High um, pain tolerance. I think high pain tolerance. Yeah, yeah. Or like pain immunity is what you're looking for. Yeah, yeah. So that so they won't feel pain. Um, they'd be a lot stronger. So you could you could have adrenal glands like sort of uh, being triggered a lot. Um, with the with the human being the host, if the human was to feel threatened, or it would then confer, it could possibly confer onto the fungus, which would then respond accordingly. So let's so you know like the thing, yeah. Yeah. I'm not saying that the fungus would be like the thing wherein it just suddenly turns into uh, a wet dream conceived by the likes of Geiger, <laughs> but more, but more that it would start massively, like spores would just be, just spread everywhere. Yeah, because I I feel like I feel like that would be a great defense mechanism because because if you've got a human that's that feels threatened, the fungus recognizes that. Spores going everywhere. So even after even after it's dead, there is always the chance it can still infect another person. It can still spread. Yeah, it for sure makes a lot of sense that it would do that. I think mm. there's even like animals that do something like that. Mm. Like um, you know how when you know there's those bugs, right? And they've got that worm inside them that lives in the abdomen or whatever. Yeah. Basically. A tapeworm. They... It's kind of like a tapeworm, but it's a hell of a lot worse because it's like, like imagine if we had our entire um, abdomen filled with a worm. Basically, it's like. Oh, uh, I think I think I might know what you're on about, but I. It's been that long since I've um, read or heard. It. Yeah, go on. Yeah, go on. Basically, it, it can detect when the host creature is like dying, and it will attempt to evacuate. Ah. Uh... That's kind of similar, in a way. I could just imagine that as a green text. Be me, shoot steer. <laughs> Deer's dead. Great big alien thing comes comes out of its posterior. <laughs> Have nightmare fuel. Shoot it. It doesn't work. It's coming for me. End up hacking it to death with an axe. Go home. Never go hunting again. WTF nature. Yeah, nature is really messed up, man. Mm. Holy crap. Oh, uh, going on to that. No, with, with nature being messed up. Why? Because um, obviously we use examples given by real life when it comes to making fiction. We need a basis. We need like a template to build off of. Um, and that's the same for everything. Because if, if, if it wasn't, then how could anybody relate to it or know what it is? Because it's not grounded to some degree. It's like, take... take um, with 40k, the Tyranids, and you've got Orcs. You've got... I mean, or, the, the Orcs especially, they are so different to what you'd normally expect like they sure they are orcs but they also have the whole um comical thing to them and the whole thing uh, all of the stuff that doesn't make sense where they believe something to be true it is therefore true so on and so forth but that is still based on on reality to some degree what if you was to have it where it's not just a fungus that has to spread through this but what if you had 
parasites, animals, plant life. There's a lot you could do with it. Nature is neither good nor evil. It's it just it's right. nature's nature. So you could have an entire ecosystem that does this to reproduce. You could have an entire planet where all of the life shares in this one commonality. Yeah, for sure. And and it could be so diverse and it could be so horrific for um say us to look at that we just leave them to it yeah man it's crazy to think about mm. basically like um an ecosystem revolving around zombification is what you're getting at right yeah yeah because you do you do you do there is a lot of parasitic stuff um in in real life you have you like you will have animals that will um have a parasitic relationship with other animals. Like you'll have wasps that will lay eggs in a trench. You'll have, you'll have a cuckoo bird which will just destroy eggs and replace place them with its own eggs. Yeah. Um, so so on and so forth. Why not take it step further? You could you could have an animal that maybe like a maybe type of revivi uh, reviv revivifying venom, a zombifying venom. Right. Yeah. So it could it could what it could always do is it could always just bite bite the target. Make the target a zombie, and then the zombie would do something from then on, in which the animal could use. It could say the animal could direct its zombie to do whatever it wants, or it could it could even use it to lure in more prey. Yep, and you've given me another idea. What mm. about the prion zombie? You know about the prion diseases, right? Oh yeah, like the brain ones. Yeah. So basically, yeah. for anyone who doesn't know. Um, prion diseases are stuff like kuru or in cows the mad cow disease basically mm. it's like a kind of misfolded protein but it works a bit like a virus in that if you ingest this protein it begins to convert other parts of your cells or whatever into this protein and it's basically like an incurable fatal disease that has kind of zombifying effects but the, the really dangerous thing about it is that the prions are incredibly hard to destroy. They need to be basically incinerated in a furnace and they can survive in like nature for years. I think for deers, with the deer um, disease, what it's called, um, uh, I forget what it's called, but the, the deer prion disease. It... Mad deer disease? Yeah, mad <laughs> Yeah, something, I don't know. Anyway, the, these deer, right, they walk around the forest and they're, saliv yeah, yeah. they're sal salivating because that's like a symptom. That's not this. rabies, is it? No, no, it's um, it's different. Uh, All right. Anyway. So we got so we got Bam so we got Bambi in the forest. Bambi sees Bambi's mum. Bambi's mum is frothing at the mouth. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. And this froth, it's full of prions, and they're they're dripping these prions onto like the grass. Another deer comes along, eats that grass, gets infected, becomes a zombie, basically. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um. Well, that's a lot to take in. Yeah. Um, <laughs> with, when it when it comes to when it comes to these prions, like you you said you said that they're folded up, right? So it's like so if we take a shirt and we fold the shirt, that's that's the prion, yeah. Yeah. Look, I don't understand the scientific terminology really. They always ex describe it as a misfolded protein. However, a protein folds, I have no idea. But um, in that case, in that case, for the comical aspect, we'll just say we've got these folded shirts, <laughs> these molecular folded shirts. So these folded shirts are able to go to other shirts and make them folded and spread. And only fire you can. This is this is zombie. This is zombies on a molecular level. Yep, and it exists in real life, and it's terrifying. It's brilliant. Um, going on to that. Mm -hmm. So, are these? So you said you mentioned deer. Are these able to infect everything, or is it just deer, or is it just one species? Because it for deer, it's not able to infect other creatures, but there's mm. always the weird chance that it can. For example, with mad like, cow... like I was I was about I was about to mention a book that should not be named there, and then I just realized, wait a minute, we're in a podcast on YouTube. I should not mention that, which <laughs> should not be named. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> anyway, like the weird thing is like mad cow disease, right? Yeah. Apparently, you can eat the flesh, and you whatever prions are in that, they won't infect a human. But mm. if you eat the brain matter or something like the spinal cord, you will get a prion disease. So okay. it's got this weird ability to jump species, but only in rare situations, I believe. You know, it's always like the chance, like nature finds a way, right? Mm. Yeah. I, 
going on going on to that um i think i've said this before we're in even if it's an uncommon, even if it's rare, all you ever need for that jump to happen is one incident. One little incident, one singular event where that happens, it's it's spreading. Yep. If 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 um the first I'm being very careful with this. If the first one <laughs> if the first one isn't destroyed and it's managed and manages to spread it around, then it becomes a, a much bigger then it becomes a really big issue because once it's once it's spread around, then it continues and continues and continues. Yeah. Um, there was there was one thing I had in mind. I completely for- bloody forgot what it was now. But uh, it was it was it was re- it was relevant. It was relevant to the yeah. It was, it was relevant to it. Um, I'll see if I can remember what it was. But when it comes when it comes to well, when it comes to these to these prions, what are and. It, it froths at the mouth and it spreads through there. Yeah. Yes. Yes. I remember what it was. Have you ever heard of the exploding caterpillars? I believe so, but I don't know the details anymore. Like it, it rings a bell, but beyond that, I don't know. It's the. I'm trying to remember it myself. It's the one. It's the one wherein caterpillars will get infected. Then it will take. It will alter their personality, and it will basically cause them to go onto the very top of a leaf or a blade of grass. Nice. And what it will do, it will. It sounds yeah. It sounds a lot like the cordyceps. Yep, and and you'll find that the reason for that is so that it can spread. It's got the best place for be, for spreading out. And what it will do is it'll be up there and it'll cook in the sun while its body is undergoing this process um, and this behavioral process. And after a while, it will just explode. It will just. But because this this isn't a uh, Michael Bay um, Steven Spielberg <laughs> explosion. This isn't like a massive. <laughs> Uh, f- like uh, this isn't a massive five hundred thousand dollar explosion. This this because it, this is a caterpillar. It's just going. Yeah, it's just it's just, it's just going. Yeah, this it's just a little pop. So it's doing a little pop, and its guts and organs are all over the place. Um, you know, everyone's really startled. But because the caterpillars, they just don't care. They're just going to keep eating. But they're infected. Rinse and repeat. Yeah. Uh, with the prions, it doesn't only spread through saliva. It pretty much spreads through everything. Um. So, like, when hunters, you know, kill one and they butcher it or whatever. I need to. Yeah, I think yeah. some hunters do eat it, but I don't think many do because they're pretty disgusting to look at. But mm. basically, you have to either bury... That's not, that's or... not a nice thing to say to hunters. They, <laughs> <laughs> Their lives matter as well. <laughs> I know the deer, not the hunter. <laughs> but anyway, yeah, like, they have to bury this, this prion carcasses, like, down really deep in the earth in like yeah. a special landfill or whatever because if they don't then it can spread so yeah basically any kind of matter from that deer is contagious it's really crazy oh, wait hold on if they're burying it in the ground doesn't that i'm just thinking would that spread it still because if it's in the ground and I would it it's... would it get into would it get into the soil would it get into the plant life above would I it think... like I think what they do is they bury it in like a clay lined pit or something, and the clay binds with it really oh, effectively. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's something no, like that's, that. Yeah. It's not like they just was... chuck it in the ground. It's like a yeah, me, me, I, was, I, was, I was having a stupid moment. I was just thinking that uh, <laughs> they've just dug a shallow grave, just slapped, slapped a body in there, and just went, yeah, that's, that's enough, and then just buried it and went back home. Yeah. And then by then by the end, during, during like a storm with lightning in the background, you just, just see like this hoof shooting out of the ground menacingly. <laughs> Yeah, it's it like comes a back. giant problem in the USA for um, deer because you know mm-hmm. more and more of these deer are getting this prion shit and they just can't get rid of it. And it's even spread to Norway, I believe, or somewhere north, either Norway, Christ. Sweden, or something. It's infected it's gone, the moose. It's gone from it's gone from America to Norway. That's impressive. <laughs> yeah, and it also went to something crazy, like it went to South Korea or some shit because they imported <laughs> some of these deer in like a zoo or something. Uh... I don't know. Yeah, and one of them was, in, and one of them was infected. So, were, yeah, yeah, yeah. So, someone fact check this because you know I'm just going off vague things I remember here, but it has spread. No, uh, it's it's with we're, 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 this is a YouTube video. In the comment section, we're going to have dedicated scientists explaining er, explaining every single point we've made that's incorrect. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. There's, there's always somebody there going actually. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> we're, we're we're fine. We're fine. Yeah. So yeah, um, I think unless you have anything else to say, that pretty much wraps it up. We've covered everything. We've covered fantasy, 
we've covered uh, science. Mm. We've covered um, all the different kinds of uses for zombies. Um, yeah. Uh, let's see. We've got mushrooms. We've got prions. We've got this. We've got that. We've got diseases. We've got fantasy. We've got sci-fi. The only thing I could think of that is left is just um, a modern day apocalyptic zombie setting. That's the only thing I could possibly think of. But the thing with with that is, I mean, if that was to happen, depending on what it is, there's not a lot you can actually do. Yeah. Because in the fantasy in the fantasy setting, you have magic. There's always the element of magic to disease. Magic. It's, it's oh, there's a zombie over there. Magic. Click your fingers, fireball. Job done. In sci-fi, likewise, you've got advanced technologies. Oh no, the zombies full of the zombies full of zombies. What do we do? Next, well, I'm going to press this button, and the, the planet's not there anymore. Yeah, I think really good candidates for like a realistic kind of zombie apocalypse scenario would be like imagine if rabies somehow yeah. could transmit through the air, like Ooh. people cough. It's not. It's not even that. It's well, if you had um, because of how rabies is, like you, I don't. Last time I checked, you cannot cure it. And it is a horrible. Hor- I'm trying to remember the details, but it is a ho- absolutely horrible thing to have. It's kind of it's kind of like up there um, amongst the what the f uh, like. What, are we allowed to swear on this? Yeah, are we allowed yeah. to use profanity? Yeah. yeah, it's like what the fuck nature kind of thing, uh, kind of things. Wherein, why does this exist? Um, if you had rabies that if you had rabies that had a quicker incubate, like if it had a similar slash quicker incubation period to that one disease that should not be named. Um, <laughs> I don't want that bloody banner on top of the video. <laughs> yeah. Demonetize, you, you've said this one word. <laughs> yeah. Oh, bloody hell. But if you, if you had that, and if you change it around a bit, make it more effective, make it more um, transmittable, make it, to, I guess, better for humans specifically. Yeah. <laughs> there's that's going to cause issues especially with how we are today i mean we've we've, sh- we've shown we've shown that people i mean governments are they have they have a plan for it whether they listen whether they actually go with that plan is up to them and people you're going to have pe- you're going to have those that know it's a threat and they're not going to want to do anything to spread it you're going to have those ignoring it and believing it's not true you're going to have those spreading it and then you're going to have uh, deliberately and and then you're going to have and then you're going to have those that will possibly start worshiping it and doing weird stuff with it. Look, and then I... you're going to have sorry. And then you can have those, those people hoarding up all of the medical uh, stuff and then yeah. slightly rationing it out at, at stupid prices. From what I've seen of this year it would be a total disaster. Yeah. Um for anyone that doesn't know basically rabies it's like it attacks the brain. Um it mm. like destroys parts of it or whatever. It makes the creature want to bite other creatures to spread it. So it's like the perfect zombie virus, really. I'm trying to find, because there's one that goes into the details of it. Ah, I think it's this one. It's a little bit long, though. Am I allowed to read it? Is that right? Yeah. As long okay. as it's, Is it, like, copyrighted? It's a... It's a... It's a... <laughs> It's a comment on Reddit that somebody's taken a picture of on their phone, and then they've posted it on Imga. I guess it's gone through enough, you know, layers that it's no longer... Yeah, there. it's... it's Whether it's copyright is, any, is anyone's guess. Let's hear it. Um, okay, rabies. It's exceptionally common, but people just don't run into the animals that carry it often. Skunks especially, and bats. Let me paint you a picture. You go camping, and at midnight... You decide. I'm, I'm so tempted to make this into a Shia LaBeouf cannibal meme. Uh, you, you decide to take a nap in a nice little hammock while sleeping. A tiny brown bat, in the rage state stages of infection, is fidgeting in broad daylight, uncomfortable and thirsty due to the hydrophobia, and you snort, startling him. He goes into attack mode, except you're asleep, and he's a little brown bat, so weighs around six grams. You don't even feel him land on your bare knee, and he starts to bite. His teeth are tiny, hardly enough to even break the skin, but he does manage to give you the equivalent of a tiny scrape that goes completely unnoticed. I'm just picturing that, like this tiny bite, this tiny bat screaming at the top of its lungs, just flinging itself onto somebody, and it's really this really dramatic thing as it bites down, and the person's just like, <laughs> <laughs> "Yeah, I mean, could happen." Ra- Rabies does not travel in your blood. In fact, a blood test won't even tell you if you've got it. Antibody tests may be done, but are useless if you've ever been vaccinated. 
you wake up none the wiser if you notice anything at the bite size at all you assume you just slightly scraped it on something the bomb has been lit and your nervous system is the wick the rabies will multiply along your nervous system doing virtually no damage and completely undetectable you literally have no symptoms it may be four days it may be a year okay that alone is actually quite scary but the camping trip is most likely for long forgotten then one day your back starts to ache or maybe you get a slight headache at this point you're already dead there is no cure the sole caveat to this is the milwaukee protocol which leaves most patients dead anyway and the survivors mentally disabled and is seldom done see below there is no treatment it has a 100 percent kill rate wow that now let me just go on to that that alone is why rabies is not a bigger issue yeah because because when a disease it has a 100 percent kill rate it kills everything it's it's all of its victims because it once all, once it, it it stops itself it's so successful it stops itself that's you know yeah it can only get so far that's that's why ones that don't kill uh, people spread much much further and much better totally true absorb that not a single other virus on the planet has a 100 percent kill rate only rabies and once you're symptomatic it's over you're dead so what does that look like your headache turns into a fever and the general feeling of being unwell. You're fidgety, uncomfortable, and scared. As the virus that has taken its time getting into your brain finds a vast network of nerve endings, it begins to rapidly reproduce, starting at the base of your brain, where your pons is located. This is the part of the brain that controls communication between the rest of the brain and body, as well as sleep cycles. Next, you become anxious. You still think you only have a mild fever, but suddenly, you find yourself becoming scared, even horrified, and it doesn't occur to you that you don't know why. This is because the rabies is chewing up your am amygdala? Amygdala? Your brain, basically. Yeah, it's, it's, it's munching on your brain. It's, 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 base, it's, it's already a zombie. Yeah. Oh, we're talking about zombies, and all along, the, the real zombie was rabies. As your cerebellum becomes hot with the virus, you begin to lose muscle coordination and balance. You think maybe it's a good idea to go to the doctor now, but assuming a doctor is smart enough to even run the tests necessary in the few days you have left on the planet, odds are they'll only be able to tell your loved ones that you die, uh, what you died of later. You're twitchy, shaking and scared. You have the normal fear of not knowing what's going on, but with the virus really fucking the, am the amygdala that is amplified a hundredfold. It's around this time the hydrophobia starts. You're horribly thirsty, you just want water, but you can't drink. Every time you do, your throat clamps shut and you vomit. This has become a legitimate active fear of water. You're thirsty, but looking at a glass of water begins to make you gag and shy back in fear. The contradiction is hard for your hot brain to see at this point. By now, the doctors will have to put you on IVs to keep you hydrated, but even that's futile. You were dead the second you had a headache. You begin hearing things, or not hearing at all as your uh, famulus goes. You taste sounds, you see... Taste you taste sounds and you see smells. Hmm. Neat. Everything starts feeling like the most horrifying acid trip anyone has ever been on. With your hippocampus long under attack, you are having trouble remembering things, especially family. You're alone, hallucinating, thirsty, confused, and absolutely undeniably terrified. Everything scares the little shit out of you at this point. <laughs> these strange people in lab coats, these strange people standing around your bed crying, he keeps trying to get you to drink something and crying, and it's only been a week since that little headache that you've completely forgotten. Time means nothing to you anymore. Funny enough, you now know how the bat felt when he bit you. You know, the bat you've got no clue was actually there. Yeah. Eventually, you slip into the dumb rabies phase. Your brain has started the process of shutting down. Too much has been turned to liquid virus. Your face droops. You drool. You're all but unaware of what's around you. A sudden noise or light might startle you, but for the most part, it's all you can do to just stare at the ground. You haven't really slept for about 72 hours. Then you die. Always, you die. And there's not one fucking thing anyone can do for you. Then there's the question of what to do with your corpse. I mean, sure, burying it is the right thing to do, but the fucking virus can survive in a corpse for years. You could kill every rabid animal on the planet today, and if two years from now some moist, preserved, rotten hunk of used-to-be brain gets eaten by an animal, it starts all over. So yeah, rabies scares the, the shit out of me, and it's fucking everywhere. Source, I spent a lot of time working with rabies, would still get my vaccinations if I could afford them. Oh, so this person is obviously American. Hmm. Yeah. <laughs> oh, so um, yeah, basically what I yeah. take away from this is if rabies found a way to, first of all, not be lethal, so mm. like maybe just put someone in like a zombified state forever, basically. Yeah. And um, yeah. 
basically you've got a zombie apocalypse pretty much um going on going on going on to that the quote on uh, the, the the bug that's been you know around the world a bit it's going on tour it only has what a one percent two percent um kill rate even less it's like even less and it's as successful as it is and it's probably it's i think it hasn't it killed more people than rabies by now surely oh for sure it, it, it must have so if you had rabies that had that Christ, that's a. We probably shouldn't be talking about this. We might be giving uh, governments around the world ideas for making new weapons. Just like yeah. write, write that down, write that down. Look, all you need is a, a virus that's symptomless for a year, that does that results in rabies, and that allows you to spread it for a year. Yeah, like coughing or whatever. Then you know, holy crap, you've got the apocalypse. Oh bloody hell. It would be kind of like The Walking Dead, wouldn't it? Everyone isn't everyone infected anyway in there. It just takes death to trigger it. Yeah, I believe so. Oh god, imagine that! Imagine that in ten years' time, suddenly within a couple months, every single like, not everyone, but most people on the planet start developing the exact same symptoms at the exact same time. <laughs> and trying to trace it back would be so impractical because it's what ten years worth of stuff. Yep. Cool. <sighs> That's it. At that point, at that point, you've got humanity just shrugging, and going, "Guess I'll die." Yeah, man, I'd just like be fortifying my house and like preparing the traps, assuming I'm not out there wanting to bite people because I've been made into a zombie. Yeah, I actually think the zombie apocalypse is like one of the better ways to die because you know mm. you can kind of go down fighting a bit. It's kind of cool. yeah. <laughs> it's kind of cool. <laughs> Oh, oh no! The zombies are coming in. Don't worry, I've got my, I've got my, I've got my weapons. I've got my trusty, trusty baseball bat with nails stuck in. Exactly. I've got my, I've, I've got my shaver that has, uh, that has a, what, a, a dinner knife stuck to it. And I've got my trust, and I've got my trusty M14 with laser sights, additional stock, extra magazine. <laughs> yeah, it's just a water, it's just a watermelon smashing competition, basically. Yeah. Oh, bloody it. <laughs> <laughs> I've got, I've got all these weapons. I don't even have this gun. It's got one bullet in. Okay, what's for, what's it for? Myself. Oh, yeah, that'd probably be the best course of action. Honestly. Yeah. Anyway, dude, we've been going for an hour and a half. Can you believe it? <sighs> wow. Okay. Yeah, it doesn't feel that long. No, it doesn't. That's podcasts for you. Hmm. I think this one's been really good. We've covered so much more than I could have covered in just a video of me rambling on. Yeah, and that's 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 the good thing though, isn't it? When it comes to podcasts, like when you've got two people that bounce ideas with each other, it just it, it naturally uh, does its own thing. Yeah, it does. It's really good. Mm. I think this should be the format for more world building going forward, assuming that yeah. people like it. Yeah, could even could even get more people in to add some diversity when it comes to opinions and and uh, ideas and whatnot. Yeah, I think like one or two more people would be good. Mm. I think when you get to the five person point, it gets maybe difficult to yeah. manage, but yeah. Could even in, in, if it becomes more, if it becomes quite um, like if people uh, like it quite a lot, you could even get people in the comments. Well, um, wanting to come in, like you could even get specialists or uh, experts that quite like uh, necromancy yeah. and undead stuff. A zombie like, expert. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I'm an expert in zombies. I should know. I've spent five. I've spent five years on Facebook. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> hey, here's something for you. What should we name this thing? Um, zombies and chill. Zombies and chill. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, it's the the, the Chubby Boy uh, podcast, Zombies and Chill, episode one. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So, or, or some, something like that's that's what I'd call it. It's um. Uh. Yeah, I'll, I'll put it on the idea list. I've got to think up, like what I'm oh, going to call it. Yeah. Hmm. Oh, well, I guess we should probably end it here. Yeah, got to. Can we, um, when it, you know when it comes to like, what you're going to have in the background of the video is it just going to be a one image so that people can have it on the background and do other stuff? Or are you going to have like total war gameplay on the back? Or I'm probably going to do like total war gameplay and just other gameplay and for the relevant parts, like when we we're talking about the Chinese uh, mummy. I'll put like, yeah. you know, maybe a picture up or the name or whatever. And, you know, when you're talking about the, um, 
the disease i'll like just show text of it and like when i was talking about that worm i'll probably show a picture of that worm exploding out of some boat yeah and, and in what i'll do as well is i'll send you the uh thing i was reading so that uh, people can always read it if they want yeah it's or they idea. Like, it's it's there it's there Fantastic. so no uh, yeah i've sent it now there you go thank you you're welcome all right, so I'll see you for the next one, probably, where we'll probably discuss either mummies or liches or ghosts. There's so much to talk about. Um, what if what if there was a vote on it? Yeah, we could do a vote. It's a good yeah. idea. Because then, then people would have... It would be more interaction with the community, and people would... Uh, you know, you could, have, you could have a list, and people could go for the one that they find most interesting. Yeah, I'll do one of those YouTube uh, community poll things. Mm. All right, dude. <laughs> Thanks so much for being on. It's been a great discussion. It's lovely to uh, lovely to have been on. Thank you for having me. Yeah, I will see you for the next one. I shall see you for the next one. Thanks everyone for watching. I hope that that's been enjoyable for you. I personally have gained a lot from it. It's a ghost is a really like smart guy, and he writes a lot of fiction. He's got great ideas, which is why I thought he'd be perfect for this podcast. So yeah, um, let me know what you think. It's like my first time ever doing a podcast, so hopefully it went well. Um, I'll do that poll so you guys can have some influence on what the next topic should be. I'll see you on the next one. More, uh, more necromancy videos and stuff coming soon.